Hey guys, so we are about to begin day two of my electric vehicle conversion project. And here's what we have so far. And don't worry about all these red pieces down here. That's just the parts to my engine hoist, which I'm going to assemble right now. And finally, we have one completed engine hoist. The only reason it's up on the ramps like that is because I had to tighten the bolts in the rear, and it's uh, kind of hard to do while it's fully on the ground. So now, uh, even though that my engine hoist is complete, I won't be using it straight away because there's still plenty to do in the engine bay in terms of prepping the engine for removal. And as well, I'd like to take out uh, all the things in the back to like the exhaust and gas tank first. So now what I'm going to do is jack up the vehicle. So now we got the vehicle up in the air, supported by jack stands. I can begin to work taking this whole exhaust assembly out. I don't know how well you can see, but these bolts are so rusty I don't know how they're going to come off. A little with an impact, but they seem to be like almost fused to the flange here, so I don't know how well that's going to work. On second thought, those bolts are freaking impossible to get off, so uh, we're going to have to use an angle grinder, which I don't actually own. I tried using a Dremel, that just wasn't going to cut it. So I'm going to have to go buy an angle grinder. I don't want to do that right now, so in the meantime, I'm going to work on taking off this gas tank. Hopefully that'll come out a little bit easier, along with all the fuel lines. I'm having a hell of a time trying to get this fuel filler neck to separate from the gas tank here. Uh, it should just be a rubber hose holding it on with a couple clamps. I only did the clamps closest to the actual fuel tank, and I'm pulling and pulling and can't seem to get it off. So I'm actually just going to cut through the clamps with a hacksaw. I'm going to try to be very, very careful not to uh, get any rubber bits into the fuel. Because even though there isn't a lot of fuel left in here, I'd still like to use it in my car. Works like a charm. As you can see, I finally got the freaking fuel tank out of this thing. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, mostly because of this one bolt. I don't know if you can even see right in there. It's a little dark. Um, there's one bolt in there that's blocked by this line right over here. And uh, so you can't really, you know, get a, a ratchet on it or an impact or anything, but it has to, you know, at least be very, almost pretty much out in order to get the fuel tank out. So I had to use just a regular wrench, but I don't have enough leverage in the wrench. I had to get a pipe, so I didn't really know that I had a pipe laying around. I ended up taking it off my basement ceiling. And uh, if you think that's a joke, I'll tell you right now it isn't. I actually did take it out of the basement ceiling. Um, and uh, I was able to get rid of this bracket right here. But now I'm just having stupid problems. And uh, what I mean by that is I've got the fuel tank right here. It's on the ground, except uh, I can't pull it out because it hits the differential right there. So after all this, I got to jack up the differential again and uh, try to sneak it out. Unfortunately, my jack doesn't really jack up all that high. Uh, this is about as high as I could get it. Um, even though the jack stands can go a little higher and they came with the jack, so I really don't know what they were thinking. But uh, anyway, I'll jack up the differential again and get the tank out of here. And then it's time to move on to something else. I'm not quite sure what yet. I'll decide what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take out this thing. No, not the screwdriver. The thing underneath the screwdriver. I'm not entirely sure what it is, actually. I think it might be a charcoal canister because it looks very similar to the charcoal canister in my Corolla. Uh, all I know is it has fuel lines going to it, and uh, that pretty much guarantees they don't need it. I'm also going to take out anything else back here that uh, carries fuel or power to fuel or anything like that. And uh, that'll be my next step. So here's something weird I found, this little thing that's just sort of dangling there. It came off here, just sort of rotted away, and I actually have no idea what it is or what it's supposed to do. I don't know whether it's even necessary in an electric car, um, so I'll leave it intact for now, but I'm going to have to find a better way to mount it, obviously. So 
Okay, here's just a quick update. I got the fuel lines out. They're all right here. And uh, of course we got the gas tank sitting right here. I still got the, uh, the old gas in it because I want to actually transfer it into my car, which you probably can't really see on the street over there. You know, figure free gas. What the heck? I'll take it. Now at this point, I've done pretty much all I can in terms of the back end without having an angle grinder since I can't actually take out the exhaust. Uh, so what I'm going to focus on next is actually prepping the engine for removal. So it's uh, kind of a daunting task. I'm not really sure where to start, but I figure I'd probably start with draining fluids and uh, then go with the uh, the radiator and because uh, that's kind of in the way anyway. And then um, or maybe the battery. Battery definitely first. Then fluids. Then radiator. And uh, you know, we're probably back from there and see what happens. So now let's see what's in this oil pan. Whoa, there she goes. There she goes. Ugh, it's getting all over the drain bolt. Yeah, well, I'm so glad I won't ever have to do that again. Well, I was gonna go drain all the coolant now. But as you can see, the, uh, there's kind of a lot of oil in there. So the coolant won't actually fit in this pan, so I gotta go take it to the auto parts store tomorrow and get them to drain it. And then I can do the coolant. But that doesn't mean I can't start taking apart the top end up here with all this you know, air intake ducting and such. So that's what I'll get to doing. So I got some more plastic bits I won't be needing. But uh, I will be needing that. And uh, quite a lot more of them, actually. Well, this is kind of scary. I wanted to keep the AC compressor and the alternator, so I had to take off the belt tensioner. I don't know if you can see down in there. Uh, apparently, see, I didn't know much about belt, belt tensioners, but apparently there's a big spring behind it. And I took off the nut and tried to pull it out, and that huge spring just sprang right out. I'm really glad my hand wasn't in the way, or uh, that could have been a pretty nice injury right there. That's okay. Blood is good for ratings. Coming up on Electra TV. Okay, I have officially decided that whoever designed this truck was a moron. More fluids are drained. We checked the time. And Scott cleans up after a Freon disaster. So stay tuned to Electruck TV.